It is springtime, and if you're here, that means you're interested in the Masterbuilt Gravity Series. Today, I'm going to help you decide on which one suits you best. The 560, the 800, and we'll even talk about the 1050 as well. Now let's get into it. Now I ran the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 560 for honestly the last two years pretty hard. Pretty hard. I've put a lot of cooks through this. I've run this thing for hundreds of hours and I've had a fairly good experience with it. Now fast forward two years later, Masterbuilt sent me the 800 uh, for, to cook on and to see what I think of it. And I can tell you from first impressions, the 800 is a much better built grill. Now the Gravity Series 800 does cost $200 more than the 560, but we will get more into price later. I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the differences and these key features might be the reason why you choose one over the other. Now, like I said, we're gonna talk about price. To start out, the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 560 costs 499, 500 bucks. Now, if you got this in the off season or end of season, I've seen these as low as 150 and $200 at Walmart. If you happen to snag one at one of those prices, that is fantastic. Awesome job. Now, the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800 costs $700, $699 retail. Now, there are a lot of features, including size, that impact that. So we're gonna get a little deeper into some of that. Now, the first difference and the most significant difference is the size and the configuration of the grills. So let's open them up. Now, imagine this. The 560 is 560 square inches and the 800 is 800 square inches. Now you will notice that the rack configuration is a little bit different. You will notice that the 560's configuration of the top shelf and the actual top of the grill does look different. The 800, they removed the top and the entire lid covers the top of the grill. What that does is allows us to have an additional rack a little bit higher. We're calling this the warming rack. Now the square inches that they talk about are total cooking surface. This is not total main cooking surface. So 800 square inches includes your main surface, your middle shelf, and your top shelf. Same situation for the 560, it's the main plus those additional shelves. It's a little bit deceiving. Now taking some quick measurements, the 800 is 77 square inches larger on the main cooking surface, and to me, that's the most important number. We are looking at doing our main grilling, what can we fit here? We are 24 inches by 16 and a half inches, whereas this one is 22 by 14 and a half. So we're basically two inches wider and two inches deeper. Now, the one thing that I do like about the top shelf on this one better than I do on the 560 is because the top of this grill is in the way, it kind of interferes with what you can actually put on that top shelf. Now, granted, you're gonna have a similar situation with that because whatever you put up top here, you might smash it with the lid, but just be cognizant of what you're putting on that warming rack and you won't have an issue. In terms of the makeup of the grill or the cooking surfaces, they're basically the same. You've got your cast iron two-sided grates. You've got the smoke and the sear side. They use a couple different patterns, you know, for whatever purpose you're doing smoking or searing. And they do that on both grills and actually on the 1050 as well. One of the major differences in appearance that you'll notice is the 800 has a lot more stainless steel. They have the stainless steel shelf, which you, your controller is mounted to, and they also have the stainless steel foldable front shelf. That is an awesome feature. I can tell you, I don't know how many times I have been filming or cooking and I have a cutting board or a tray and I'm putting food on or taking food off. Without that front shelf, it's a hassle. And sometimes it's hot and sometimes you're trying to get in and out of there. It's very easy to dump your food. I, I haven't done it, but I can tell you I've been close a few times. So that right there for me is a big upgrade versus the 560. Now I've seen on some of the Facebook forums and things like that, people have made their own and put, you know, some butcher block and actually got themselves a nice, significantly larger front shelf. But we're talking about stock. We're not talking about modifications. One of the things that I noticed right away with the 800 when I was assembling it, and if you're interested in this grill or you've purchased it already, I've got assembly instructions right here. I go through everything and assemble it in under 25 minutes. So don't forget to check that out. During that assembly video, I noticed one thing right away. The hopper on the 560 opens in this direction. Now you're probably saying, what's the big deal? The hopper on the 800 opens in this direction. Well, let's think about the lids and how they open as well. 
I can open this lid and not interfere with that hopper lid. Ah, they thought that one through, made it open to the back. Big difference. Another feature that they've added to the 800 that was non-existent on the 560 is your power cord management. On the back of this grill, there's actually a little lasso for you to wrap that cord around so you're not dragging it all over the place or bunching it up. But that brings up a very, very, very good point about the power cord. For those of you that don't know, I'm an electrical engineer by trade. This cord came with the 560. And from the minute I fired this up for the first time, I was completely irritated with this cord. This is a cord that belongs on my modem or router in my house, tucked behind my TV or entertainment stand. Not on a grill where this cord's running across the driveway, getting stepped on, getting things wheeled over the top of it. I hope Masterbuilt uh, thought about me when they provided the new cord for the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800. As you can see, this is much heavier duty. Now people told me in the comments when I complained about the 560's power cord, they said you don't know anything about electricity and cords and impedance and all this fancy stuff. I do, and this is garbage. I'm glad that they came out with this instead. The Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800, at $200 more, at just slightly larger with a couple of fancier features like stainless steel and front shelf, you're probably saying it's not worth it, but you're forgetting one of the nicest components, and that is the flat top griddle that comes with it. You swap out the manifold, take out the grates, and you put this in place, and you've got yourself a griddle. I don't know if you've cooked with griddles before, they're freaking awesome, and I'm excited to give this one a try. Now, speaking of the griddle, the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800 is the only one of the Masterbuilt grills that comes with the griddle. The 1050, which is styled very similar to this 800, does not come with the griddle. So that's what makes this one unique. Now, one thing that I'm excited about with this new grill is their rotisserie. I didn't have this before. Now, this rotisserie kit will fit on any of the Gravity Series grills, but this is a feature that you can add to this to really amplify what your grill is capable of doing. Think about it, charcoal grill or smoker, you've got temperature ranges on all of the master built grills from 150 to 700 degrees, digitally controlled. You're running on charcoal, you can add wood, you've got a flat top grill on this one, and you can also add a rotisserie. I mean, talk about an all-in-one package, the master built gravity series has it going on. Now, when you're in the market for a $500, $600 grill, you can't expect a whole lot. And I remember opening up and assembling the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 560 initially thinking, that's eh, kind of tinny, kind of thin metal. They do have double wall construction, so it holds heat pretty well. Uh, but I wasn't entirely impressed. But I have to remember the price point. This isn't a $3,000 smoker. It's $500 at Walmart. Nothing wrong with that. You just got to remember that. Now this one at $200 more and also kind of their second generation, I really believe that they've done a much better job to make a more seamless grill. The build quality seems much better and it's a lot more stylish and sturdy. Now I never had any issues with anything with my master built that weren't self-inflicted like grease fires, uh, but that's my fault, not theirs or yours. I will say that assembling these grills, uh, even though they're very similar, the 800 was a lot easier. Now, we did assemble this two years ago and they might have modified their instructions to make them more user friendly from when we assembled this and I hope that they did. But just going based off of my experience, the 800 was a much more pleasant experience when it came to assembly. So I hope this video gave you a good overview and breakdown of the differences between the 560 and the 800. Now, I'm gonna leave you with this. If I were to choose one of the two, I'm gonna go with the 800. It's slightly bigger, has more options like the griddle, and it's just a little bit better of build quality. I think personally, it's worth the extra $200. Now, the only reason why one of these aren't for you is if you need to feed a lot more people. You have a large family, you're doing big cookouts on the weekend. The 1050 gives you a lot more space, and I think that would be a better option if and only if you need that extra space. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out my overview and burn-in of the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800 right here, and I'll see you next time at Anderson Smoke Show.